This podcast is brought to you by The Pod Tower, hosted by the Watchtower database. Visit youtube.com slash the pod tower for informative, hilarious DC animation themed podcasts and live streams every week. And check out the Watchtower database for DCAU video essays, timelines, fan theories, and more. And please enjoy the show. Three, two, one. You didn't trust I, me. I had, I, I did clearly because I only clapped once. Your face said that you didn't trust me. <laughs> it was a trust, trust but verify kind of situation. I think it was I trustless. To, yeah. All right. Well, I feel untrusted. Have you seen that movie? No. Untrusted. It's got like Liam Neeson or something. I was hoping you, and you would just leave it at that. <laughs> Have you seen that movie? No. No, okay. Uh yeah, Liam Neeson stars in about seven different movies that have the same cover where it's a slanted bold font, usually blue or gold, <laughs> that uh-huh. says like adjective and then he's just standing there with a gun against a building. That's a adjective whole genre. was one of his best films. <laughs> yeah, I really like it. Yeah. Adjective two kind of went off the rails, but adjective three really brought it back to form. <laughs> is taken an adjective? I guess it is. Yeah. All right. Anyway. It's an adverb. No. Is it Something, an adjective? Because it's it's describing the noun. <laughs> one moment, please. <laughs> I need that as just a soundboard it's a sound now. Verb. Verb. To taken. To take. Oh, take is. Take in past participle. Yes. But it doesn't give me edge. It doesn't say edge period. No, it just has take. It's not giving me take. Look, take listen, this is important. I need to figure this out. Taken adjective. Adjectives. Uh, Definition of taken adjective. Understood in a certain way, made sense of. A word taken literally. A smile taken as consent. Whoa! Bro, hang on a second, Google. <laughs> she smiled. <laughs> she, let's see a smile. All right, so this is oh! episode. <laughs> oh, no. So, so now we're starting this one uh, as episode one hundred and sixteen <laughs> of Jump on the Mat. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> of all the sentences they could have yeah, said, examples. Why that smile? That's consent. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm James from the Watchtower Database YouTube And I'm channel. mortified. <laughs> and oh. uh, that's not really consent. Don't use that as an excuse or an adjective. I'm Can here to show somebody... my good buddy Brian. What? Wait, Brian. what dictionary? What, what dictionary? I, I just Googled taken adjective. This is from vocabulary.com. We need to have some words. <laughs> I was going to say, where's your, your about page or your contact page? I can <laughs> send in a request. To speak. I spoke with vocabulary.com and they told me that taken means this. Uh, I want to show I want to show Brian at some point the entire DC animated universe from start to finish for the very first time in the controversial air date order. It was an, uh, affecting us still today because we're finally watching Hand of Fate after saying it twice now. Uh He's still, he's still st- <laughs> the hand so of taken. Fucked. <laughs> is that just the subtitle for this episode? Is taken adjective? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe nothing, we'll see as we go. I suppose. At the time of this recording, Superman the animated 246 series has two forty six streaming on Max. My dog and available on DVD and Blu Ray. My other if you'd like to follow along, you can head over to bit.ly slash watch DCAU. Links in the show notes. Today, we're watching The Hand of Fate. For real, we're watching The Hand of Fate. Okay. Our prediction before was that this was Superman versus Clock King, and then I gave you a second chance, and it was that uh, Lois Lane is just being put in a bunch of peril constantly, and Superman's like, well, it's fate, I guess, that she's going to die or yeah. something. Which is basically, I think it's just the show. It's just the show. Yeah. Is that. <laughs> the hand of fate. What are you going to do? Lois Lane falling off a building, shooting you, out of an elevator through the ceiling all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you think at a certain point in time, they just take Lois and like 
Just like ship her to Arkham or something. <laughs> just be Clearly like, you just can't stay you here. Can't be alone. <laughs> You're gonna this hurt yourself. Not, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like this is for your own protection. Here, you can look at this <clears throat> chick that likes chicks and this chick that likes plants. And uh, <laughs> weren't they in? They were in a cell together, right? Who? Poison, uh, Poison Ivy, and and Harley Quinn. I don't think so. I think they've always What's, been in separate cells. Why do I feel like I saw them in a cell together? I don't know. I, you were looking up Rule 34, Poison Ivy, and Harley Quinn. That's what it was. <laughs> that was it. It does make sense. That's one I have looked up. Uh, this first aired <laughs> Saturday, <laughs> October 11th, 1997, at 8.30 a.m. on Kids WB. This is one week after last episode. Uh, oh, no, it's not. I wrote one week after last episode, World's Finest. I mm-hmm. hadn't changed it yet. It's actually one day after last episode, Bizarro's World. Okay. Wow, which comes before Hand of Fate? Oh, which comes first? Bizarro's World of Hand of Fate. It's the Chicken or the Egg song from Sesame Street, circa 1970 something. Get with the program. You knew the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You don't 12. know who which came first, Chicken or the Egg? What the hell's wrong with you? I I know. This aired number thirty three and produced number twenty nine between Father's Day and Bizarro's World. This is written by Hillary J. Bader and Stan Berkowitz. Hillary J. Bader previously wrote A Little Piece of Home, My Girl, Target, Action Figures, and Double Dose. And Stan Berkowitz previously wrote The Way of All Flesh, Two's a Crowd, The Promethean, Brave New Metropolis, and co-wrote WF Part 3. You don't have to call it WF anymore. I'm gonna. Directed by Dan Reba. Oh! DR. <laughs> the doctor himself. Uh, previously directed 10 episodes of BTAS, as well as Lasak Parts 1 and 3, The Main Man, Buffed P, Mixia's Pixelated, and Father's Day. And music is by Shirley Walker, the supervising composer for all of BTAS, composer of the BTAS and S-Test theme music, and composer for Holiday Night, Sins of the Father, and Father's Day. What a father's in there. Father wow. episodes. Wow. Dan? Dan. Father's? Dad. Uh, animation is by Coco Dong Yang. Previously animated 42 episodes of BTAS and 12 episodes of STAS, as well as both new Batman Adventures episodes we've watched so far. And that's all the information about the thing that you are prepared to watch now. When are we going to watch another Batman? Uh, soon. T- tomorrow. <laughs> In the grand scheme, you know. Mm. If you want to uh, head over to the link in the description, listener, or send us a yappy beverage to support the show, we will give you a shout out in an upcoming episode. We'll also do a push up for every dollar. So send us coffee for our health and your entertainment. Today's yappy bevs come to us from Anonymous Sour Cream. <laughs> Good luck with the WF event. Hoping it goes well. Sad that I can't make it in person, but here's some help with funding. No, Brian, that's not what WF stands for. Oh, with funding. <laughs> uh, they bought six Yappy Bevs, which is equal to 30 push You ready to go? I guess, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, my headphones. One. All right, Jesus two, Christ. Three. One. Four, two. Five, three. Six, seven, four. Eight, Five, nine, six, ten, seven, eleven, eight, twelve, nine, thirteen, ten, quick rest, fourteen, sixteen, and here we go for part two. Eighteen. One. 21, two. Twenty-one. Three. Twenty-two. Four. Twenty-three. Five. Twenty-four. Six. Twenty-six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. You know, I could just lie about Three. these. I really don't have to do them, but I am a man of my word. Oh. And I'm going to do 10 more now to equal to 30. Here I go. He's One, struggling. Two, three, oh, poor four, Jamie. He wasn't five, ready for this. Six, seven, <laughs> eight, nine, ten. <laughs> ah! <laughs> do you like listening to me breathe? Yeah. That was, that was uh, the most we've had so far, huh? I probably I don't I think I would remember if we did more than that ever. <laughs> Thanks, anonymous sour cream. Maybe th- is that yeah. worth telling us your real name <laughs> or your real sour cream? Your your what's He's too op- tired to make good jokes. Adjective. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
Let's go watch the episode. Why do we even come back and say more stuff? We just do it. We should we should we should just do more push ups. Oh no, I don't think so. Do you want to do ten more right now? No. This is my domain now. The metaphysical realm. I've moved beyond good and evil. But there are people trapped. I'm sorry. I truly am. Superman. You and I are alike, you know. We're masters of our destiny. Don't waste your life in endless battle as I did. Not when the universe beckons. You're wrong, Fate. We're nothing alike. How do I summon you back to the podcast? Bro uh, Broderick, come. Broderick, clue. Come, come, come. Just say come a bunch like <laughs> Dr. Fate did. <laughs> End guy at the start reading. Yeah. yeah car cult, come. Pee pee poo poo. Is that, uh? <laughs> and now I'm here and I'm going to make a hole in the ground. And I'm going to chant for some demons. And, that's, and the Wiccan that's girls are going to show up and do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wanted I mean, them to come cut back to them and and have I know like, like what if they're like actually making something happen? Helping, yeah, because <laughs> clearly <laughs> witchcraft or whatever is real, so it's like it would, it's, what statement are they making? Okay. What you just watched? Take a listen to the synopsis. The short summary, which is sometimes kind of long. That implication that you <laughs> What did I just watch? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and you have to, oh, yeah. Brian told me. I can remember now. Also, like, I need that song for me. I realize that the song's not for me, but, no. like, I feel like I need... <laughs> I need someone else to tell you what you just watched instead. Man. Yeah, it's, like we have a like, listener on. It's your homework, I guess. It's your duty <laughs> on this podcast is to tell me what happens. That's fair. It's yeah. the least I can do for all these bucks. <laughs> yeah, for all the push-ups. All the push-up you know? bucks. Thanks, yeah. push-up people. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the push-up crew. They need something more than just being said, I'm anonymous we'll, and I'm... Look, we'll kiss you. <clears throat> what happens in uh, <laughs> the Hand of Fate? Okay, all Almost right. I said Dr. Fate. That was okay. as if that was the title of the episode. All That's right. That's the guy. Okay. Uh-huh. All right. Uh, all right. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay. There's a bet. This is going out to all you who didn't actually watch the episode. <laughs> okay. Which should be none of you, Kimmy. <laughs> okay. Am I supposed <laughs> to drop a beat now? What's going on? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Give, lay a beat down. <laughs> I can't. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, wait, I was supposed to do the, like, record scratch men in black sound now. Oh, well, sorry. <laughs> it's too late. It would have worked. Right. So there's... That would have been that would have been pretty good, actually. It would have been great. Oh, well. <laughs> All right. So there's a thief, and he's, like, stealing stuff from a museum. And he steals a thing. Well, he goes to steal a vase, and he's like, no, fuck that. And then the vase breaks, and it reveals a tablet. And he's like, foreign language that I can't read. And then it transforms to not foreign language that he can yeah. read. And he's like, that's <laughs> normal. It's, there's also an English button. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it looks at your eyes and knows what language you speak. <laughs> yeah, something. Uh, it's like, hey, say these weird Egyptian or whatever words or like Sorry. Latin. It's just doing like a smartphone setup screen. <laughs> Choose your language. <laughs> uh, English. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Anyway. Yeah, so he chooses English and he <laughs> says some stuff in Latin and then he, <laughs> uh-oh, he's becoming a bad demon guy. Mm -hmm. And you're like, he's got glowing eyes, he's got claws, he's going to be like a wolf man. Nah, he's a, a hentai tentacle monster. <laughs> he's Squid Boy. And by the way, Squid Boy <laughs> leaks everywhere. <laughs> yeah. You were like, oh, he threw up on the, in the alleyway. Like, there's just this trail of liquid. Yeah. And then, yeah, going down the street, you're like, oh, he's peeing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's so disappointing. So. <laughs> Clean it up. <laughs> Clean it up, man. Yeah, so there's this demon now, and he's like, finally, I'm free. I'm going to, like, take over the Daily Planet and open a <laughs> portal to other demons. This is all, like, um, uh, what's that? The Avengers. 
What? <laughs> no. What? I no, was thinking, the- like in in the Avengers, uh, the bad guys take over Stark Tower and shoot a portal to let all the aliens come in. But it's oh, like backwards from that. It's not yeah. the same really at all. It's just what I thought you were going to say. But no, I don't know what you're trying to say. No, I was going to say that it's all HP Lovecraft. I yes, think that's yes. called the Eldritch Horror stuff. Like it's very like demons that look like manta rays and then they fly into yeah. Lois. They make her into a demon and they fly into Jimmy and they make him a demon. Superman's like, oh no, there's this magical force field and I can't get through it. Punch, punch. And then there's like <laughs> this goth girl who's like, I've seen the craft. I know what's up. Uh-huh. And then everyone's like, hey, we don't like you. You're, you. We don't like you. You're bad. And she's like, I, but I have all the answers. And Superman's like, who has the answers? She's like, I do. And he's like, well, guess again. And then he like leaves her. <laughs> he picks her up and moves her out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> just really unnecessary, Superman. Just saying. Yeah. You, can, you don't have to touch her. You can just go around. <laughs> you can just fly up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to start. I'm just going to start like picking up people smaller than me and moving them out of the way at the grocery if, store. <laughs> if they're, <laughs> which is everybody, if they're on any sort of trajectory of where he's flying, whatever pathway he's taking, if there's people on the ground, just picks him below. Up, he has to, them. Uh, they're in my way. <laughs> I might blow a slight breeze on them when I go by. And they would not like this. Yeah. So uh, anyway, he goes to this like giant like obelisk in the middle of a park that like apparently nobody's noticed before. <laughs> yeah, and you were very confused, rightfully. Yeah, yeah I did. I had no idea what was going on. Uh, and then an onk opens in the like a door onk opens mm-hmm. and uh, Superman so, well Superman's outside going fate fate <laughs> and he starts like reciting poetry or whatever and then some lady comes out instead and then some lady's like oh hey what's up not some lady but yeah not some, like some other lady so some other the lady's like by the name of some lady but yeah yeah some other ladies like hey bro looks like you got clawed in the chest by a demon and uh i'm gonna fix that for you and also <laughs> your clothes like you got the jurassic park 3 logo on your chest <laughs> <laughs> do you need some help with that the paper clip <laughs> <laughs> what did you mean to do that <laughs> i tried to paste an image into the document and it shifted the entire document around <laughs> oh yeah the bad old days superman visits the tower of microsoft word <laughs> Faint. it would be Dan. Dan. <laughs> it would be a brick obelisk in the park wouldn't it that is microsoft <laughs> yes uh and it just has a thing like do you want to up your subscription you want to pay for three more years of this <laughs> you're like no i really don't no no thanks <laughs> uh, basically like superman's talking to some other lady and then eyeliner boy shows up and is just like, <laughs> hey, uh, I could help, but I'm not gonna because I'm too busy looking at space. And Superman's like, <laughs> that's dumb. And then he's like, there is no dumb. I am just looking at space. <laughs> Only Zool. <laughs> yeah. And he's, like, he's like, Superman's like, well, I'm not looking at space. Dude, do you ever look at space? It's sick. <laughs> <And> then, <laughs> just, let me show you my space. Uh, what did I say it was? Space Cerebro? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. I, I forgot they took him on to Cerebral, but, or Cerebro. Cere- yeah. Bro, they were Cerebro. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, so then Superman's like, well, I'm out of here. And then some of the ladies like, but if you had this olive, <laughs> maybe you wouldn't die. And he's like, got she it. said, like, take this. It'll help or whatever. And then you're like, an olive? And then every time we saw it from then on, like Dan Turpin looking, what is that? Is a fucking olive? Like, How is that supposed to help us? Or whatever. <laughs> and then it works. Yeah, he gets like you put it in your gin, I think. <laughs> yeah. Then you drink the gin and then you can walk through and then Dan Turpin tries it and vaporizes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I was instructed wrong. Sorry. <laughs> Look, I didn't, I didn't really get an owner's manual on this or anything. <laughs> So Superman like goes in through the force field and he's like, I'm going to, I'm going to punch you. And he's like, I'm going to like pee on you. And then Mr. Fate is like, uh, I'm, I'm here to also do some peeing and here's a tablet. And the, the bad demon guys all like, I thought that a uh, carcal, 
Yeah, Karkle. Karkle? <laughs> Captain Karkle. Steve Karkle. <laughs> uh, yeah, Steve Karkle. For perfect. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> he, he drops the tab. I didn't mean to. Or no, what does he say? That's Did I no. do that? Did I do that? Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's... Uh, I'm embarrassed. Anyway. Uh, I had it in my head, and then my brain was like, no, say the baby doll thing instead. Because <laughs> we're talking about Batman, obviously. It can be both. Yeah. So then uh, he's all, uh, oh no, the tablet that I thought was gone. And, and Eyeliner Boy's like, what what was never gone cannot be ungone. <laughs> and, uh, and he said, Mr. Fate. <laughs> Mr. I have a, oh, I got a can here. And he's like, <laughs> whatever's it doing? Don't do the de- undemoning to me. <laughs> the unbadgening, the undemoning. <laughs> he undemoned him. So he undemoned him. And then everyone was like, oh. Oh, no we're not demons anymore and the We've building's been like demoned. yeah and the building's like oh i've been disdemoned too <laughs> i see the building just goes and then it's back yeah, to yeah it normal does, it's building. like a bit of a sound effect and then it's and then it's <laughs> yeah. the daily planet again and then they go to lay down eyeliner boy and some other lady is like I, I rubbed him with some lotion and he's <laughs> now he's taking a nap. <laughs> and uh, Superman goes, are you okay? <laughs> Your eyebrows are gone. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, don't worry, Superman. I'm going to wear the, the mask again. And then they all like punch into the sky and freeze frame like they did in another episode. <laughs> it's just an episode of... Uh, police squad is it what's is that what i'm thinking of is that the name of the show you're thinking whatever of the Bre- breakfast club no, Bre- no, my brain no, won't no. unsay that breakfast Le- oh my god what's the liam ne- leslie nielsen <laughs> we the- was talking about leslie nielsen yeah police squad they end every episode with like a f- everyone just pretends to freeze frame but then the set just constantly falls over in a part and shit behind them the whole time it's so yeah. fucking funny you gotta find a video okay. of this anyway okay. yeah that's basically what happens uh the official synopsis a dormant spirit released from an art let me try this again a, a dormant, dormant spirit, spirit <laughs> released from a, i'm gonna make it so you can't edit that out okay cool a dormant a deem- spirit <laughs> oh I, I meant to say demon sorry try again try again a dormant, a dormant spirit, spirit re- released from, from an, an ancient, ancient artifact, artifact comma, comma invades, invades a petty thief creating a monster, monster named, named Karkle. steve Kirkle. <laughs> superman, superman must, must gain the assistance of dr fate, fate to battle, battle this monster, monster. the yeah. end you should edit those together so it just sounds like I happen You're, to know exactly what's going on. You being know said. exactly what it is, yeah. And then we'll all definitely edit this part out, revealing that you didn't. That's good. Thank you. Because I, yeah, okay. I need people to know that I'm magical. Like, I got a coven of white chicks, and we're going to, like, bring <laughs> uh-huh. some, like, myrrh, and we're going to, like, pray or something. Yeah. I, I did legitimately want them to do something. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, I thought, I, I I didn't remember this episode super well. I thought maybe they would at least cut back to whenever Superman and Dr. Fate save the day, and then it would just show the Wiccan girls being, like, finishing some chant, and then they, ah, we did it. It was us, definitely, or whatever, <laughs> to finish off the joke or something, but... Maybe that had to be cut for time, or or maybe we're just smarter than the writers and directors of this episode, like usual, like we paint ourselves to be at all times. I mean, if it wasn't the truth, then it wouldn't be true. Yeah, I know. Right? What can never be unmade can be made, you know? Man. <laughs> Truer words anytime, have never been spoken. <laughs> anytime I start to make cookies, I'm like, whatever is unmade can be unmade, <laughs> you know? The way the, that was a very, like... Okay, type of answer for like, no, we watched him break it into. I thought Dr. Fate would be like, ah, but I have another one or something. But instead, yeah. he's just like, you thought you broke it, but you didn't actually. I think, okay. <laughs> as much as like maybe this synopsis has been picking on this episode. I didn't hate it that much. No. That was my least favorite part, though. We're just like, <laughs> yeah. It, it, they said it was a thing, and so now it's a thing because that's what yeah. fate does. Uh, he checks his Doctor Fate watch <laughs> that has a Doctor Fate helmet on it. <laughs> we only have four minutes left of this episode, so I have the tablet actually. <laughs> <laughs> also, he did. He didn't. He didn't. Did he need it? Like he just he he yeah, memorized the thing. Know. He started he reading it, knew. but then he's. I guess ah. you have to have it present. I don't know. Ah, I love presents. They they could have written it that he didn't have to have that, and he could have just said the chant and. And there's a big hole that he goes back in or whatever from which you came you shall remain until you are complete again right and then come 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 he says and come. then he goes back in there yeah 
come on, 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 yeah, um, this is okay. I didn't love it, but I, I also I think it was better than some of them that we've watched. Uh, really, so far, like I don't know. I, I liked it better than last episode or <laughs> the one that's produced after this one for Bizarro's World's World. Finest. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I liked it. Yeah, because it okay. was it was it was very Scooby Doo uh, to to an extent. <laughs> yeah. Other than like you know they didn't like pull off the like oh it's old. Jenkins and like pull <laughs> off the mask. But they kind of did the way that the demons de-demonize. They just come off like a sheet or whatever. <laughs> That's true. I think they yeah. spent most of their animation budget on people becoming demon because like that shit was sick. Mm, I have thoughts on <laughs> the demonization and undemonizationing of people. Okay, but I think that's a keen effect discussion. Maybe. Okay. It's an unkeen effect to me, so I'll just talk about it now. I, I, <laughs> compared to all the cool stuff going on visually in this episode, I think that that's the weakest stuff. Is the way that they, it's uh, definitely the way they turn back to normal because it's just Got it. yeah. Odd image of demons slide off of image of Lois Lane or whatever. Yeah, but even like them becoming demons, it, it's cool looking. But it also is just sort of like compared to, you know, we've seen like Clayface transform and it's so fucking cool looking. And then they just have like, uh, I'm just going to hold my head and then I'm going to burst like a pinata and there's a demon now for most of them. <laughs> there was like the, the Jimmy and Lois ones got a few extra seconds to them, but most people were just like weird like wrapping paper sound effect <laughs> and then they're just <laughs> a demon now i don't know i always I, thought that, I that was kind really of really liked lois's because it was like it was yeah something that I, I don't think i've seen in the dcau where it's just like really low like like dan went heavy on the dutch angles on this <laughs> yeah and like this was like when lois transformed because it was kind of like I had this sort of like hesitation of like, oh no, like what's is as she's got like the ring girl hair and stuff. <laughs> well, it's like Lois and Jimmy, like surely they're not gonna get like changed, right? Like they're gonna escape somehow. They're gonna go into like mm -hmm. we had like uh Chekhov's air vents and they're gonna go hide in the air vents from the demons <laughs> or something like that. But mm -hmm. uh no, sure as shit, they all get transformed and Lois is, is like this camera like basically in the floorboard staring up and it's just very like yeah. symmetrical but she's like kind of like curled over like holding her face and then that turns into like the demon and it's just all like yeah. weird eyes and shit and I'm just like I don't know man it was like there were a lot of <laughs> horror elements in this and I actually yeah. I really liked it it is really unique and different like compared to I'm trying to think of anything any other time I guess the only kinds of stuff we've seen like this so far were like Cleopatra lady giving Rachel Ghoul the big suck in the basement <laughs> <laughs> and and her like ghost slime ball guys. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know, maybe a handful of other things, but like the to just be like, Yeah, hell's real and here's all these fuckheads from hell. <laughs> here's a big demon worm coming through the hell hole. I've, I feel like that that big face at the bottom uh that Superman gets to Yeah. It looked like it was almost reused from like a scarecrow episode or something. Like it had that same exact sort of feeling of like, ah, Batman's falling into an abyss or something. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm maybe it just looks similar, but I mean that was the shit that I was just like like it's <laughs> you were there for is, it. Yeah. It, this is one of those episodes that's just like you know, the start well, not the very start, but like a lot of earlier episodes and even kind of still to this day. I have a mm -hmm. lot of this like, oh God, suspend the disbelief, right? Like it's it, it's alien oh, yeah. stuff and like we're just like here for all this like weird shit. <laughs> Man and this bats. one Yeah, <laughs> right? <laughs> and this one was like a thousand fold, like way over the edge. <laughs> yeah. And so it became more believable. It was yeah, just like okay. it, it was just completely, completely gone. That was something that you would complain about with Batman a lot was like when they would do something mildly supernatural and then you'd be like, but they haven't established that that's how this world works. Like, I don't get it why that, that would be a thing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, now they just go completely like head first into like, it is how the world works now. <laughs> Deal with it. Uh -huh. <laughs> There's hell. <laughs> There's witches. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. 
I don't know, man. There was. Well, I'm glad you liked it. I mean, I, I'm not. Yeah. I'm never going to be like, "Fuck you." You're supposed to not like this one, or whatever. Yeah, you are. <laughs> it's not one of my favorites. I think it. I think the fact that I had a a series of coloring books as a kid that had like a bunch of team ups between Superman, Batman, Flash. Uh, these ones that have been introduced so far on the on the shows, mm-hmm. uh, and Doctor Fate was always in these coloring books, also on like every single team up adventure with them and all this stuff and it's all it was all in the same art style and whatever and so i i would always assume like oh dr fate he's like plays a huge part or something but he shows up for like two minutes at the very end (laughs) and otherwise is a guy that superman somehow knew already even though we've never seen him or his wife or his tower or anything before. Yep. And <laughs> he's just like, I know what to do. I'll go get Dr. Fate, of course, a character I know. And <laughs> yeah. And he runs off and gets him. And and the first time we meet Dr. Fate, he's just going, I don't do that anymore. I'm getting too old for this shit. <laughs> and, <laughs> and they're like, but what? I just met you. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Yeah, it's that- like if Batman showed up on Superman and that was the first time you met Batman and he was just, no, I'm Bruce Wayne. Get out of my face. <laughs> that I think that was something that, you know, we, we talked about a little bit already, but I was really like concerned and confused about was, you know, you have this assuming you were supposed to remember who this is or something. Yeah, and I'm like, was it something yeah. that's just production order? We yeah. haven't had their introduction. And then it's like, if it was a movie, I wouldn't have thought about it. I'm like, oh, well, we're going to get their introduction. We're going to learn about them right, slowly. Right. But in a serial like this, I'm like, yeah. wait, did I? Oh, my God, I'm getting, I'm 114 now. And now, <laughs> now I really can't remember anything. But no, we just haven't ever met them before. Yeah, I, I I've. it's never really something that you can figure out because <laughs> there's a couple of comics uh, like superman adventures was the tie-in comic to this show and dr fate's in a couple issues of that but none of them really make sense to be before this episode necessarily so we just never really know how they met or what happened like why did they have to team up on something before like classically superman is weak against magic much like kryptonite like in comic books okay and so he kind of basically figures that out this episode by like oh a magic guy like slashed me across the chest and like it's hurting me a lot and whatever but so I need to go to the magic guy to to get help. The magic guy that I know already. What, how how did he go on an adventure with Doctor Fate in the past, seemingly, but didn't figure out then that he was weak to magic? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he just happened to never get touched I, by whatever they fought. I think that like <laughs> this is one of those situations where I would have written the episode a bit differently, mm-hmm. and I think like it would have been you know because like you have this like goth girl show up and is all like. Well, yeah, I know all about that from these books I sell at the shop. And be like, well, yeah. you know, what do the I... Dancing Hobbit or whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, you could just have her be like, this is actually a big deal. Like, Car- Steve Kirkle, like, yeah, <laughs> you got to go talk to the man. You got to go, you got to go talk to fate. And Superman's like, what are you talking about? Be like, yeah. fate, he lives in the obelisk at the park. <laughs> Yeah, he lives in the brick, uh, like, Camelot Castle Tower (laughs) in the middle of Central Park. (laughs) And that's just, that's what I'm saying. Like, you could have given that character some credence. Like, it didn't have to be, like, a joke. Oh, yeah, what these girls think they're witches. Like, yeah, I know. Yeah, I was trying to, like I said before, this Inyopsis song was like, what are they, are they trying to say some, make some statement with that? Like, are (laughs) are are the producers saying, like, Oh, because like I'm trying to think of uh, around the time that this episode would have come out, my mom's like best friend who would make like music with her and they were in a band together and stuff mm-hmm. it decided like, oh, I'm going to I'm going to be a Wiccan now. And mm-hmm. and so like to, to know, <laughs> I just like that know, sentence. Like, I'm not yeah. smirking at Wiccan. So, so by the way, yeah. So like I don't know if that was like a, a thing at the time of like, I mean, this was this was 97. Yeah. Yeah, that's like literally like in the heart of the movie The Craft and yeah, uh, people kind of finding like witchy things like it had been ramping up through the 90s to be like more and more popular and I could see people like kind of poking fun at that time. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was like, you know, I was the I was the outcast in high school that was like absorbed by the goths and so like I have a <laughs> fondness for it because those are the people that were like, you know, helping protect me or whatever. 
You meant spells. And that I... <laughs> <laughs> no, like fists and, mm, and numbers. No, <laughs> <laughs> but um, it, it just wasn't, it wasn't popular. And so I think it was like... For the people who took it seriously, like it was just something to laugh at. So that's probably what this is yeah. just like on the tails of. It's just a weird choice now, I guess, like 25-ish years later to be like, ha you like a thing. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like at, the, like at the time it would have been, it would have been totally on par. 96. Hey. So. In the middle of in, producing this episode, probably. Uh, yeah. it, the craft was released uh the beginning of may in 96 so okay. like it could have that been out right. yeah so yeah that 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 rings true and uh yeah i kind of i guess that's i just wish that they had some you know maybe that girl rain song or whatever was like actually like <laughs> good able good. to help yeah. out I, i'm glad you remembered the name rain song that was very good thank you yeah, she's in the credits as uh psychic girl so we'll get there. Oh, um, let me that's... give you the cast while we're talking about it. Uh, Tim okay. Daly as Superman slash Clark Kent. Dana Delaney as Lois Lane. Ted Levine as Karkle. Uh He was Captain Stottlemyre in 124 episodes of Monk, which I've never watched. Uh, Sergeant Tanner in The Fast and the Furious. General McGrath in Wild Wild West. Uh, he played a character named Wesson in Flubber, oh which gosh. was one of two uh, goons of the main villain. And now I can finally talk about this because <laughs> the main villain in Flubber uh, is played by Christopher McDonald, who voices Jorel. Oh my God. Uh, the two goons are played by Ted Levine, Carkel, and Clancy Brown. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so I, there, now I can finally tell you. You've been this. waiting that for that yeah. for a while, haven't you? I know, I have. Uh, he was also, you'll know him as Buffalo Bill in Silence of the Lambs. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> but uh, he'll be back as a couple other notable characters later as well. Sweet. Uh, I'll say I didn't enjoy his uh, pitched down voice in this. It was bordering constantly on what the fuck are you saying like <laughs> like obviously when he's chanting made up spell words it's like some that's one thing but when he's just like trying to say normal like english sentences i would like a and, number three with a coke please <laughs> let me see if i've got i'm sure i have the fucking this is coke and i'm just gonna say words now and i really have to talk like this high up before you can understand anything that i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> like even like i'm just imagining ted levine yeah can you can you just say every line like this please <laughs> just to get this room. we know we're gonna do some stupid effect on your voice i did i do wish that i had subtitles turned on because there were some times where i was just like i'm just yeah. gonna have to listen for the context because i don't know what the hell he just said i mean half of it didn't matter really he's just saying bad guy thing kind of generic bad guy thing, come but- come <laughs> Come, come, come. <laughs> uh, David Kaufman as Jimmy Olsen, Joanna Cassidy as Maggie Sawyer, Joseph Baloney as Dan Turpin, uh, Jennifer Lynn as Inza, which is Dr. Fate's wife lady, mm-hmm. uh, some other lady. This is her only DCAU acting credit. She's most known as Kess on Star Trek Voyager. Uh, she was Agent L in Men in Black, the animated series. This is a time where I should have the record scratching sound. Mm, it's mm-hmm, all. It's mm-hmm. it should have been done. I'm you should sorry. have had a Star Trek sound. <laughs> Star Trek. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Every time there's a Star Trek, it's a Star Trek. <laughs> Famously, the, yeah, the, famous uh, quote from Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> Do the- it's me, Captain Star Trek. <laughs> 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 uh, there's moments of this podcast that make me want to send this podcast to friends of mine who don't listen to the podcast so this one's going to be going to Olive <laughs> that's me Captain Star Trek uh, <laughs> Jennifer Lynn was also a movie actress in Duckman Private Dick so there you go mm-hmm. there's the connection there it is as always <laughs> uh, Star George- Trek <laughs> <laughs> oh god that's his famous line. Uh, George Del Oyo as Dr. Fate. Uh, his last name is spelled incorrectly in the credits. It's supposed to be Del Oyo as one word, but there's a space for no reason. He's of the Oyo. He is. Uh, he plays Orpheus in 140 episodes of Days of Our Lives. Rob Donnelly in 115 episodes of Generations, which I had to look up like, what is that? 
It was also a soap opera. The IMDb synopsis is soap opera about two families, one black and one white. <laughs> nice. So, that cool. Uh, he also played bit parts in Frasier, Home Improvement, Beverly Hills 90210, Just Shoot Me, Tales from the Crypt, Cheers, BJ and the Bear, and Night Court. Yes. Night Court. Night Court. Uh, Cree Summer as Psychic Girl. What? She played psychic? Penny on Inspector Gadget. Oh! And she, she's in a, a million things. I included ones that you might uh, know or appreciate. Penny and Inspector Gadget, Elmira and Tiny Toons. Mm hmm uh, Susie in Rugrats, Number mm -hmm. Five in Codename Kids Next Door. That's for Dylan. Uh, Princess Kida in Atlantis: The Lost Empire. Somehow not in Duckman Private Dick, but she will be back as many, many, many other roles in the future. Okay. Um, Good. Great. Ed Gilbert as University Guard. Uh, previously, Mr. Haley in Robin's Reckoning, and Jake and Dugan, who are Buzz Bronski's thugs in Mask of the Phantasm. Two guys waiting by the graveyard for their boss to die in a graveyard. God, that scene was uh, wild. <laughs> and last, we have Dorian Harewood as Ron Troop, who was guy that first got turned into a demon, I think. Mm. I have very small trivs. Give me those trivs. When Karkul blows up a police car, the ensuing explosion is reused footage from a scene in oh, My Girl God. when Mr. <laughs> Mr. Elon blows a vat of hot lead off its support. <laughs> <laughs> is it always literally that same sentence? I think so. Whoever wrote that. They just cut and just pasted. Just likes to copy paste it, yeah. I don't know if that was the one that I saw, but I noticed there was some almost comical explosion when Superman's fighting Karkul in the street. Something explodes and you only get like amount of the explosion before <laughs> and it then the car inside. <laughs> yeah, and that, then the car comes through. Yeah. That wasn't the smoothest <laughs> explosion cut I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as the Daily Planet employees turn and run away from Karkul upon his arrival, the lady in blue in the top left is missing her upper body for a brief moment. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> That's a hell of a thing to misplace. Yeah, whoops. She got so scared she dropped her upper half. <laughs> and then it came back. Uh, last thing I've got, this is from 1998's Wizard Magazine JLA special. Uh, this is from Bruce Tim. I believe we were just tossing ideas around about which heroes we wanted to use, and we thought Dr. Fate would look great in the cartoon. We thought it'd be a great episode to go all out on with Lovecraftian monsters and such, and hey, we loved the way it, it turned out. Uh, also, yeah. like, show off his powers. You mean his, like, little pink triangle? <laughs> that he, like, yeah. And he, like, yeah. piss you, piss you! <laughs> shoots yeah. some, like, Superman laser was beams. like, well, how are we going to beat him? And then he just, like, holds out his hand, and a little, like, tiny pink cyclone is there. And I was just like, Doritos? We're going to throw Doritos <laughs> at him? Like, like, bugles, the bugle chips. <laughs> Put them on our fingers. Flaming hot bugles. <laughs> <laughs> what did you bring? He said. <laughs> <laughs> I brought the olive. I've got the noodles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kirkle's my God. like, I have been pretty peckish and just <laughs> eats them and then goes back in his hole and that's all he had to do. Wow. Yeah. It's magic. Uh, keen effects since there we're talking about it. so yes. many. Yeah. And some things I didn't understand the art of. You were confused. You kept talking about there's layers or something yeah or yeah you, so you were getting at the fact that every time we see like a glow or something or fire there was like a slightly off kilter off centered version of it right next to it essentially uh, not every time and that's what yeah. like got me i was like oh why oh. then but not then uh, <laughs> uh, why know. then but not then <laughs> adjective I <d> <laughs> look i don't know how to explain it um, but yeah, it was kind of a, it was like a light, almost like the, the layer was like levitating over the frame. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if it was just sometimes they, they did that for certain effects or whatever. I'm guessing some, yeah, part of it's like a mat or something that's cut out for the glow to come through. And then whoever, whatever human hands put it on the glass, just got it a millimeter off or something like that. I don't know. Oh. Cause I think I mean, it was animation cool. cells. Yeah. Aren't animation cells held on by like little pegs or whatever at the bottom. I think they have to like be perfectly aligned with the pegs. I held so them on with that. spit. Just, oh, okay. <laughs> just flap it down. Just splat them on. Yeah. <laughs> Good enough. <laughs> but yeah, there was just, there was so much like, uh, just like e everything like even like the there was like an elevator light that had a cool glow to it mm -hmm. or something yeah, like the that dull triangles yeah yeah and the the zoopy zoops from the the demon guy and then we had the zappy <laughs> zaps from the from the the eyeliner guy it was a whole lot of everything <laughs> it's like the bugle chips you got bugles uh, <laughs> finger he puts them on his fingers we got bugles. they're flaming hot 
<laughs> so the pink. Well, even just like the background paintings, since it was like a nighttime episode, most of the episode, oh, there was just God, a lot of really I good know, stuff. I loved it. I, I really liked the way this episode looked. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's yeah. that's the biggest yeah. positive takeaway. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, yeah space Cerebro. Uh, yeah. It looked really good. Uh, you said some comment about the type of canvas or something. Like it just looked like it was painted on a different thing. It was very toothy. Oh. The end. <laughs> Thanks for listening. <laughs> it was good. I liked it. Yeah, I, I think the, the coolest one, the keenest one for me was Dr. Fate's arrival inside the Daily Planet. The big like swirly light that happened, onk light that comes out when he mm-hmm. arrives. Mm-hmm. Dan told us about that when we first interviewed him about, uh, I'm going to get it slightly wrong, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's like essentially a drawing of like, like a white paper with a black burst of energy or whatever, like just lines coming out from whatever vanishing point mm-hmm. in the middle. And then the mat of that being the inverse and then it's just like cut out along that and someone is like rotating it across it. So it makes this kind of, mo- what is it called? Moire? Moi- oh, yeah. Kind of dealio. Mo- uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you didn't say it, I could have told you. <laughs> M-O-I-R-E or yeah. whatever. <laughs> How do you say that? Is it an adjective? Moire. Moire. <laughs> yeah. Moire. But yeah, it makes is it, it very cool. Oh, apparently it's just moire. <laughs> According to Google, but anyway, Sick. yeah, it makes a cool thing. More, Dan was very really proud of that. Oh, uh, that was more. that was really good. Yeah, like again, this was just this was such a, uh, especially because it just wasn't like Metropolis, all sunshiny and happy all the time. Yeah. yeah, anything glowing got the chance to actually look cool against like a dark yeah. background instead of just being there. Yeah, this could have gone like real horror real fast, but there was just little elements, yeah. and that's fine because it's made for kids. It's a show <laughs> Can't be for too kids. scary. Yeah. Superman's powers in this episode. There's a power to be a bitch. You got a power <laughs> to make fun of goth people and pick up ladies <laughs> yeah. who don't want to be touched. <laughs> yeah. She was smiling. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> put magic on his weaknesses. Yeah. That's um, was established in this. Oh, oh, but it's what magic. Is, what are we calling that? Uh, He's we have to give it a funny too. name. Call him Captain Star Trek. What? Captain Star Trek. Okay, yeah. All right. <laughs> no, um, don't do that. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Uh, Karkle's Bad Touch. Karkle's Bad Touch, a.k.a. Magic. How strong is Superman in this? Not uh, really. Not, not really. He couldn't really do anything against the bad guy. He caught a car. Yeah, I, I was going to say, other than that, he doesn't really have any feats of strength that were like, wow. No. Impressive. He like punched on stuff and it didn't happen. Even like it didn't work. Fighting the demons and stuff. He was just like, oh, I'm totally like pinned down here, guys. <laughs> so like, I don't know why he's from like Philly, but like <laughs> hey Can you get this alien pug off me, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, I went and saw the manta rays at the aquarium and now they're holding me down. <laughs> they look all spooky now. I I'll give him a two. Yeah. <laughs> Can I just cough out and do two olives? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's perfect. <laughs> you give him two olives. I'm going to give him two Central Park obelisks. Okay. <laughs> We're meeting, meeting on the two. That's two good. two onk necklaces <laughs> and doorways. Onk earrings and yeah. onk doors. And onk, <laughs> yeah. They don't really explain that at all in this episode or in the DCAU at all, but Dr. Fate's whole shtick is he like. He was like, I'm pretty sure he was an archaeologist in like the 30s or something. Then he became on a mortal? Some, on some, yeah, like Egyptian tomb dig, he discovers this helmet and then it gives him powers, blah, blah, blah. And then, yeah, it keeps him alive, keeps him looking good. I was thinking he maybe like, I was like, oh, instead of like, you know, you wear a hat too long or a helmet or whatever and your hair starts to get all fucked up from that. Uh-huh. He's just, the the helmet has such a dome on top. It doesn't touch his hair at all, but the forehead eyes like really press into his eyebrows so much that over the decades and centuries or whatever, it's just become <laughs> oh no, he must, it must have been before the 30s because he said like, oh, I fought Karkle a century ago or something. Mm, yeah. But, yeah. Whatever. A long time ago. The 1890s. Yeah, the, the 1830s. The the bygone days of the 1890s. <laughs> the far days of where's Clayface. 
he's there were the, some demons that sort of look like him. I think uh, he was probably the swirling mist around the Daily Planet. Oh, okay. because everyone's I was like, gonna give him. I was gonna say he was Carcoll's pee. <laughs> yeah, oh no, I don't like that. I like the idea don't, of him being the mist because they're all like, yeah. "Oh, look at that fog around the Daily Planet." Pung pung pung. Oh, we can't penetrate <laughs> Ow, it. Yeah. My spleen. <laughs> <laughs> all these bad guys keep recruiting Clayface for their misdeeds. I, why why also the daily planet like just tear that just building down building. like i said send lois to arkham <laughs> oh yeah we're just gonna be done with this whole thing no more <laughs> newspapers said that, he said it's this building is cursed and not just in this episode or <laughs> 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 did he have a reason to choose the daily planet or were they just happened to be fighting outside of it and he went ah, this one i i would assume that this is just something you need to press the plot device button for oh where is it Plot device. Plot device. And now I press this button. He's bald, I'm bald, we're all bald. But who's the baddest bald of all? It's James and Brian's no final call. The balderarchy. Who are you, what? Steve Kirkle. <laughs> Did we he was wearing like a cloak on top of his head. Do we, we He was really like one see. thing. He was like one he, constant. He was one tone. He was the sheet. <laughs> like having such a, he was one hair. There was only one hair. <laughs> I I think like well yeah I mean I would I I guess but all the demons really didn't have hair except Lois. I yeah I he's my vote. Yeah okay. What like with in that discussion of the physics of how they become and stop being demons? Mm -hmm. You see, most of them burst out of their skin as a demon. Like all their clothes burst away, the skin bursts away, and there's a demon there now. And then when it comes off, the skin and clothes are just they're just dressed underneath again. it. It's just fine. So like, but Carcol, he's guy in robber coat, <laughs> and then when he goes, oh, oh God, I am Carcol, and he stands up. Everything bursts away except robber coat, and robber coat becomes his like phantasm hat the whole time. And, <laughs> and but then when he leaves at the end, he takes the hat with him back, he takes the cloak <laughs> with him back into the talisman or whatever. And the guy is just sitting there, jacketless underneath <laughs> in a puddle. Look, like, what's Jamie, going on? there's a price to be paid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you summon Carco, you lose your coat. Okay, <laughs> it says it here in plain English on the tablet. <laughs> this will take much from you. Like your hat and your <laughs> <Yeah>. coat. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Polly Wally Doodle. <laughs> Take my coat. Whatever. <laughs> uh, books or hip hop? I'm going to say books. I'm, Heavy books. I'm going to say books as well because HP Lovecraft. Yeah. HP Lovecraft. We don't have to because it, but yeah. Because. And top 10. Does it go on your top 10? No. Look at your top 10. Your bottom is my girl. Is it better than my girl? I... Where Mr. Elon blows a vat of hot <laughs> lead off its support or whatever. It <laughs> no, that's classic. <laughs> no, I, I I really enjoyed it. I loved it visually. I, no, I agree. I don't think it's gonna be in my ten. <laughs> it didn't like move me in any way. Mm. It just looked pretty. Yeah. Um, yeah. That. Yeah. It was good though. Dan, you did a good job. Does Dan, does yes, Dan listen Dan. to the podcast? Sometimes. <laughs> Maybe he listens to the ones he directs. Who knows? If you're here, Dan, we we applause button you. We the Dutch angles were nice. We <laughs> <laughs> they were though. I mean, that's the, like I think Dan knows how to direct an episode. I think whether or not the writing. <laughs> you know, I'm starting to think Dan or even might know. Uh, what he might know a thing, or maybe two. <laughs> Carcoles reform without the apostrophe. <laughs> We're going to go do mail now. And then when we come back, I will tell Brian the name of the next episode. He guesses what it's about. What? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that yacht. That one small extra yacht put it over. We drop. What we drop? Our weekly yacht. Oh, yeah. Those. Into the comment box. First. There sure was a lot. Now Jamie's mad. Too bad we're all. At least I am. Just Dylan Pollock. Pollock come see matupa watu yatta solo puti. And then you just. Jabba Wookie. You just turn into Dylan and lose your sweater. <laughs> You're like, ah, oh, what a bunch of baloney. And throw the Dylan Pollock aside. And then you look in the mirror. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Uh, I look like American Alex Robson. <laughs> <laughs> um, what uh, is it cold there today, Jamie? 
I mean, it's a little bit, but it's very sunny. So it's it's cold for a slightly smaller bus. Sure. Why? Just curious. I don't know. It's, okay. It's it's like t-shirt weather here. Yeah. Well, no, I I put this on because I turned off the heater in my house. I put on this coat, and then when I summer in car cold, I'll have to get rid of it, but it's just the way it goes. You, your heater was <laughs> on? It must be colder there. Well, it's set to just 68. No one cares about this. If you want to reach out to us like the fire hand at the end of World's Finest Part 3, hey! you can send a punctuated email or a 60-second voice message to batwagonpod at gmail.com, or leave us a comment on today's episode on the Pod Tower YouTube channel, but please don't spoil anything past this episode for Brian. Uh, we have a new review. On Apple Podcasts. Oh, it comes my to God. us from, I'm going to say this so wrong, Von, Von Denaid. I'm so sorry. What? Uh, Can you <laughs> very, spell uh, it? Yeah, I will. V A N D I N E J D. What? <laughs> Can you put that in the chat? <laughs> no. Uh, this is kind of, it says, a very fun podcast. Among the many DCAU podcasts out there, this one is probably the most fun, simply because this is the only one I know of where one of the hosts has never seen the DCAU. <laughs> Having watched the DCAU repeatedly, I know how much of a treat Brian is in for, so it'll be exciting to see his journey through this great mass- great universe that Bruce, Tim, Paul Dini, and so many others brought us. My favorite part is when Brian tries to guess what the episode is about. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, so I'm that's going to be somebody's favorite. I'm going to take <laughs> I'm going to take it as a positive. Jamie, yeah. you need to spe- what spell it one more one more V A what? V A N. You're writing it on your hand. <laughs> yeah. V A N D I N E J D. Van de Necht. Van de Necht. So like water, van de, van de Neid. I want. I really want to like translate this into like Norwegian, but like water's not quite right. And like, let's see, Google Translate. You know, I bet it's just a name, but let's find out. Uh, water shortage <laughs> in Danish. <laughs> oh, so I guess that's okay. I was. I feel like I was getting somewhere. Toxical, huh? Although I can't speak. <sighs> Danish is weird, huh? All right. This is from Kevin Ranke. I have the world's finest thoughts on this one. Hey, guys, I'm back. Hey! Man, I wish I could have joined you in the tent. Yeah, uh, us too. <laughs> This is my number one Yop 10 episode. Am I allowed to say that? I don't know. I've loved the concept of this episode from the start, but the one thing missing from the true 90s experience would be knowing what this episode is going to be about. There were so many little commercial reminders going into this before the air date that got me so hyped to see it. Needless to say, it didn't let me down and just kind of became one of my favorite things ever as a kid. It was so great to see Batman and Superman together, and even better when the clamshell VHS came out and I would watch it over and over because the recorded copy off the TV wasn't good enough. (laughs) The DCAU continues to have a massive influence on my life as I now keep making custom figures from much of it and the true deep obsession started with this amazing movie. I loved the shows before, but this one really put it over. Anyway, I hope hope Brian enjoyed the movie. I did. But you never know with that guy. (laughs) Just kidding. I love listening to you guys and wanted to thank you for keeping the show up. It's genuinely my favorite podcast, and it's perfect to listen to when making my figures. Have a good one, guys. Kevin. P.S. I love that you asked for punctuated emails because I'm a bit of a grammar nut myself. (laughs) That's not what punctuated means. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, It's from LexCorp Cares. Media Relations Carcol. (laughs) <laughs> hi, hi there. It says LexCorp Thulu. <laughs> hi there. I'm just here to share some car cool updates from all of us here at LexCorp. Sent using the LexCorp office's communal Eldridge tome of unknowable horror. <laughs> floor, floor 23 just past the vending machines. <laughs> Good morning, Jump Scare and Bloopers. Just wanted to call in after the events of uh, last night over at the Daily Planet um, to address the things going on with car cool. Um I know it seems like super random. Why would he choose the Daily Planet? But mm-hmm. if I'm letting you in on a little LexCorp secret just between you and me might not have been as random as you might think. Uh, so let's say hypothetically we here at LexCorp made a few deals with some uh, extra dimensional entities <laughs> that uh, if they're just in their area and they hear certain words said like, and I'm just blue skying here, like um, Lex Luthor kisses donkey or something. I mean, that's just a silly <laughs> example, but if they hear that spoken that, you know, they'd go and, you know, check it out and maybe make sure there was no misinformation being uh, mm-hmm. printed, you know, mm-hmm. hypothetically. Mm-hmm. Now, um, you might ask why I'm letting you know this, and I just know that you cover stuff in the area, and I wanted to remind you, you know, like, here at LexCorp, we hear you. We're listening. We're always listening. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Have a good one. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we love you so much. We love LexCorp. Uh, this is from J- Justin Harris. Hey. Clocking's ghost. 
hey, oh, brap, brap, and Jim Jam. I've got some yaps to drop. I love drop how spooky him, this episode was. It felt like Soups was dropped into a totally different show. The guy in the beginning felt like he was straight out of BTAS before he turned into a crossover between a mind flayer from Baldur's Gate 3 and the Phantasm. Speaking of Phantasms, it's wild to see Jimmy ghost out after hearing that voice actor is Danny Phantom for so long. Oh, Yes, I've been listening to a lot of podcast horsemen, the BoJack Horseman podcast, and they've been saying Keen a lot. Shout out to Keen Machine. Whoa. <laughs> hey. making it happen. Scotty Cameron shared with me the Dan Reba shout out video. So I wanted to play that on the podcast because I haven't done that yet. This is from when we were doing the live show and Dan was at a <laughs> Comic Con at the same time. A few of you listeners, Dylan Pollux, went up to him and, and praised and, him and, and, and thanked him. Sorry. And, and? No, I realized that you're. <laughs> You're saying Dylan Pollock, and I like my brain heard that as a singular, and I was like, "There's so what?" I was trying to say, <laughs> so but like, oh Dylan yeah, Pollock. we had the Keens, yeah. and we had all these, other, and then I realized that like when Dylan wasn't there, oh, he meant like Dylan listener. <laughs> Everyone is just Dylan. cut everything I say okay. in this episode right. out. Thank you. I will. I'm Pollock, sock puppet, Scotty Cameron, and I'm here with Dan Reba to congratulate. Congratulations on your live show. Next time, do it when I can watch it, please. <laughs> All right. All right. Definitely not Dylan Pollock impersonating a Westerner, Midwesterner. <laughs> Thank you, Scotty. Yeah, it was very fun to see a couple of you send us stuff from Dan, and Dan was was also telling me that he wished that he could have seen it as it happened. It wasn't live streamed though. It was. Is just you had to be there, okay? So I think we sorry, can get to come Dan, to the next one. We can get Dan to Big Bus. We'll do. We'll live stream it just for Dan next time. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, don't give anyone else the. We'll link. live yeah. stream from Dan's house. Everybody show oh, up. Okay, yeah. We'll not tell him that that's where we're doing the next show, but we'll just be there. Yeah. Uh, Jordan Newman, hey. Hand of Fate. I'm in a hallway because I forgot to record this earlier. You've heard that before, <laughs> Jordan. <laughs> You're listening to the Gotham Insider, reporting live from Metropolis. Tonight's top story, let's see here. Um, ooh, uh, shadow demon monsters. Uh, citizens of Metropolis transformed into Lovecraftian nightmare <laughs> creatures. Oh, cool, our flying alien met a wizard. What a cool and normal sentence to read on the air. <clears throat> I think I'm just going to... Go home now, probably. <laughs> now over to the music. I really like when we first go to the Tower of Fate and ends is doing magic, all the wind chimes. I thought that was cool. Uh, when Dr. Fate's talking to Superman for the first time, I really liked the almost E.T.-esque sort of John Williams-y bordering on creepy but still wonder and and magicness of the music. I thought that was cool. Never apologize for loving your fandom and try to stay optimistic. I was wondering how he was going to do that Eldritch Horror takeover of yeah. <laughs> Metropolis. <laughs> this is fine. It's the dog <laughs> sitting in fire. <laughs> Everything's fine. It's fine. Uh, the music I did uh, at the start, I was underwhelmed by it because the car calls like going through the street and people are screaming and running away and there's a big like gross monster and Superman's fighting and cars are exploding and police cars are flying through the air and the music was barely doing anything and I was just like come on yeah it would have <laughs> it kind of was like there was just kind of like a trotting existence of music and I, do, I remember one spot in particular some part in the fight where it's just like a solo trumpet going like like this is a scary thing and I'm like have the whole trumpet set action play that like what's going on but then yeah we did get plenty of really good stuff later so it was fine it made up for it but i was like uh oh shirley walker come on what are you doing man you're my guy <laughs> that's why um, she's not my guy uh it's from eric lebeau bizarro's world this episode feels like it should have been way sooner after bizarro's debut I can just kind of see this being months after, and one day Lois and Superman are just sitting around and simultaneously just being like, oh, fuck, I forgot. <laughs> I also just got to say that this was a major missed opportunity for a Christmas episode. Bizarro travels what? to the North Pole, winds up on the island of misfit toys, and learns it's not about what makes you different. It's about what makes you you. <laughs> and maybe he flies Santa Slay or something. I don't know. Fun episode overall, and I give it four <laughs> Venus flytrap dogs out of five. Until next time, keep mm -hmm. calm and yapa. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Eric. Mm -hmm. Kale, 
from the Crit Gail, Preservation Society. Apologies for not sending this in last week, Jim Jiminy Jim Jiminy Jim Jim Briny. I'll Whoa. admit I'm still in the morning in mourning the Laughing Dragon statue. Such a loss cannot truly be put into words, and I'm not sure I'll ever truly recover. Size, a football, color, green, current location, the bottom of a collapsed building, previously from a Kryptonian art installation, <laughs> vibe, candle in the wind, 97, Elton John. <laughs> Until next time, Kale, founder, curator, and director of operations at the Kryptonite Preservation Society. Thank you, Kale. Oh, my God. This is Dylan Pollock, The Hand of Fate. Hey, it's time for the thoughts of the week from Dylan Pollock on The Hand of Fate, or... Well, where has your ass been the whole time? Which I, I think I can start saying for every episode we introduce a new era. Brian, <laughs> you're knowledgeable about some random stuff. Thanks, buddy. What's the deal with biting on coins? The guy does it at the beginning here, and I don't get why it's ever been done. How about try bending Dylan. it? Why are you putting this dirty thing in your mouth? <laughs> As a child, I used to get Hanukkah gelt, which is chocolate coins. You know, they're wrapped in foil, but uh -huh. I never just bit down on the foil. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> and just once, it'd be nice if a guy like Karkul was like, free again. To pursue my hobby of crocheting. <laughs> but I guess he wouldn't have been trapped away then. Also, breaking news story from Jimmy Olsen. Extra, extra, Luther kisses donkey. Police do nothing because they say two jackasses can make love and it's not a crime. Oh. Also, I appreciate that Dr. Fate spends half the episode like SpongeBob's, nah, I don't really feel like it. <laughs> and then I cackled when he does show up and Karkul bitch slaps him with a tentacle. Good stuff. Question of the week. James' favorite part. Dr. Fate really feels like a first attempt name. So on the spot, come up with a title and adjective. Like, I'm thinking <laughs> Senior Truth MBA. I don't what know you the got? fucking adjective joke. What the fuck? Uh, Dylan is just the master of this. <laughs> I'm just going to do Professor Cheesy. <laughs> there it is for you. Professor Cheesy? Yeah. What does he do? It doesn't matter. You didn't ask me to come up with that part. Just the name. <laughs> oh. No. Okay. Okay. Um, Mr. Ladder. Esquire. That's an adjective. Oh, adjective? <laughs> adjective. Yeah. Right. I was Lattery. nowning. Um, <laughs> I'm the spot, Brian. Don't think. Just I say. So, I suddenly can't adjective. Like everything, I'm like, verb, 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 <laughs> verb. Mr. Adjective Esquire. I don't know. Uh, I think, Dylan, to answer your question, it's, yeah. be, it's a, I think it's a lead thing. Like you could like yeah. gold plate lead and make it look like gold. And I think gold itself is a little, while it's super soft, I don't think it's as soft. And so I think it'd be a giveaway if you could like bite into it and make an impression that yeah, it wasn't solid gold. Yeah, to test that it was real gold or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't be able to do that. Ta-da. I guess the question being, why would you have to do it with your teeth and not just bend it with your hands or something? I guess because so, you have a sturdy grip or vice <laughs> of some kind and you're just standing there collecting coins from someone. What are you, what are you supposed to use? Your pocket pliers. Bucket pliers. I mean, I do <laughs> have a, cares. I do have an EDC that is like ninety percent pliers. So, <laughs> Lenola Cola, uh, tug on the super cape. Coincidence? I think not. Didn't expect to catch the next episode while visiting Montreal. It must be fate that I caught Canadian Cartoon Network airing the Hand of Fate, aka suddenly there came a doctor and his wife. Rain song, go away, come again some other day. Superman and Doctor Fate versus Megalo Mal Malabolgia. Mal Malaboli Malabolgia. Fuck, what is that? What? Oh, it's it's the bad guy from Spawn. <laughs> oh. There we go. That makes sense. Uh, tried some Wick Donald sauce and blueberry <laughs> yop in Canada and saw a restaurant called Harvey's. No. <laughs> Suffice to say, it was jarring to have Superman and Dr. Fate already on beyond familiar terms with each other. While it would have been redundant to do the whole meetup and team up for the first time thing after World's Finest, I would have at least liked some line to explain how they met and became acquainted. The supernatural threat of the episode is certainly new for soups, and it shows off some something that even Batman couldn't handle. Dr. Fate, for all the hype, felt kind of like some guy. A some guy delusioned with the eternal battle of good and evil who gains renewed vigor to continue the good fight, but a some guy nonetheless. <laughs> I'll get back to y'all faster than a 12-hour train ride from New York to Montreal till we up again. Oh, but that's a great ride. <laughs> uh, P.S. While visiting Montreal, the DCAU episodes that aired on Canadian Cartoon Network as part of the Superheroes at Night block are as follows. Are they in French? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> The Underdwellers, this episode, and Night of the Ninja on the first day. Oh. The Strange Secret of Bruce Wayne, Tiger Twiger, Dreams of Darkness, <laughs> and Beware the Grey Ghost on the second day. Ooh. Future s Tess episodes on my third day. Cat Scratch Fever, I Am the Night, Almost Got Him, and Moon of the Wolf on my fourth day. And last episode on the first day in Whole Block, the last day aired Young Justice Outsiders episodes. Okay, cool. 
That sounds That's good. Wild. I'm glad that you got to just sit there and watch DCAU stuff and <laughs> on your trip. I might recommend you do more, like, you know, seeing the lay of the land things the next no, time I you're in Montreal. So. But, uh, you know. I think given the chance, just watch this ever for whenever you <laughs> can. <laughs> Forever. Forever. Just like I'm forcing Brian to do on a weekly basis. Forever. This is from Chris. Howdy, it's been a while. 51 episodes to be exact. <laughs> oh, boy. Nice. In short, I have been curb stomped under the heavy booted heel of adulthood. Fortunately, I'm doing much better and hope to return to my regularly scheduled commenting. As for the episode, Bizarro is one of my favorite characters. Shocking. Within the comics, Bizarro also lacks his weakness of green kryptonite. In fact, it's stated that it strengthens his powers. Oh, Anywho, shit. I've got a lot to catch up on and not enough time. So with that, I wish you a yappy Friday and a happy new episode coming out on time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and we need all the help we can get. Yeah, that would have been interesting if, if he threw him the kryptonite. He's like, thanks, me stronger now. <laughs> and just destroyed more <laughs> shit. Oh, it's fuck, yeah. Kyle, where am I going? Oh, okay. Um, I don't know where this is taking me. Uh, this, uh, how do I control this? Um, maybe I have to think about where I need to go. So, Highlander, I need Sean Connery. So, maybe I have to think about Sean Connery. Sean Connery, Sean Connery, Sean Connery. <laughs> Oh, please land somewhere with Sean Connery. <laughs> 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 where am I? All right, I, I'm looking for Sean Connery. I gotta find whatever his name is. Sean Connery. Uh, is he up there? Who are you? Bond. James Bond. Yeah, yeah, we know. You're not the one I'm looking for. Oh, I got the wrong Sean Connery movie. Yeah, okay, oh, I gotta think until classic. the next portal arrives. Yeah, um, is it me or is TMS just a cut above everybody else? <laughs> yeah. This whole episode being done by them, it looks absolutely incredible. Is it the best looking episode so far? All right, let's try this again. Of Bizarro's world? Uh, no, it was good, but world's finest I think. <laughs> was yeah. much better. <laughs> but they had a, a cheat code there for a second, but whatever. Also, what's the Connery that we're looking for? The Highlander one, I think. Oh. Sean Connery and Highlander? I would assume so, based on the context of this voice message. <laughs> Man, I don't know. <laughs> but I, I don't really know. Yeah. I remember the, the, the lore of it, but... Uh, Sean Connery cum sadam <laughs> True score. Hand of Andrew Tate. Oh. <laughs> hey Jerry's and Ben. Hey. Big angry demon possesses random man, and Doctor Fate finds the love of the fight again. Gotta love when the DCAU does spiritual magic stuff. You always end up having some sort of time. Not sure if it's good or interesting time. <laughs> Lastly, what would you guys say? Your top five villains from each show you've seen so far are thanks, Brody. Sent from my LG Turbo Wash Graphite Steel 5.5 cubic feet high efficiency impeller energy star smart top load washer. <laughs> Uh, you have your cheat sheet now. I gave you your your document. I you do. I haven't looked at it yet. Yeah, you got a table of contents essentially of the the main the the main heroes and villains that we've met so far. From Superman, my favorite villains so far uh, have been, I think, Parasite, except for the Livewire team up where he was really creepy. What is Lobo, Brainiac, Metallo, and uh, uh, fifth one. <laughs> I'm going to say Mr. Mixia spit lick just to fuck with you. Uh, and from Batman, I'll go Joker, obviously, Mr. Freeze, Clayface, Rupert Murdoch, and Man Bat. Okay, cool. <sighs> okay, so five <laughs> five villains from each. I made Brian this cheat sheet document so that he can reference stuff when he forgets that we've yeah. seen so far. I put some little, like... <laughs> helpful hints for some of the, the characters that you might not remember immediately by looking at them like who i recognize this but who is this <laughs> for like dick grayson formerly taller robin uh maggie page alfred's girlfriend from one episode <laughs> <laughs> lobo <laughs> i chose lobo also lobo <laughs> uh lobo lobo i'm just trying to like <laughs> weigh them i'm a lobo lex Metallo's pretty good. Oh, Livewire. You are picking L's. <laughs> and uh, Luminous? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, You're out of L's, bitch. <laughs> uh, bizarro. And then from Batman, I mean, Clayface. I think mm -hmm. you could pro I could probably do this one without the cheat sheet, but I, I want to yeah. just have a look-see. Clock King. 
Boo boo. <laughs> <laughs> no, I need to do the C's. It's weird to think of like the phantasm. Claw, comma, red. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird to think of the phantasm as, as a villain, but mm-hmm. um, phantasm because it's there. Fucking poison ivy. Yeah. Joker. How many is that? Four. Man bet, man bet, man bet. <laughs> Mr. Freeze. Oh, I didn't say Mr. Freeze, did I? Yeah. Mr. Freeze. There you go. Yeah. Boom. Okay, cool. That was hard. Uh, Ryan Hip, hand the monos of fate. The name's Ryan, but my elven name is Icky 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 Bang. It's everybody's favorite. Gee, I wonder if they've ever seen Ghostbusters 2 before. And all the stuff with the Wiccans is really unnecessary and sort of aggressive, but I kind of love it because it is just so ridiculous and out of left field for a Superman show. And the moment when he just picks her up and just moves her out of the way is pretty great. I'd have to imagine the reason for this big scheduling shakeup with this episode is because today was the premiere of Men in Black, the series, of which one of the big creative minds behind the show was Batman alum Frank Power. Oh. Now the Hand of Fate was directed by someone named Dan Reba, but you have to wonder how much different it would be if it was directed by Frank Poo. <laughs> Question of the week from Dylan Bollocks. What is your favorite episode of Batman directed by Frank Power? Uh, <laughs> God, now we have to look up Frank Parr <laughs> Batman episodes. I'm just going to go with whatever you say. Okay. This is taking too much brain power. Uh, power. power. He, okay. He directed a bullet for Bullock. He directed... Ooh. I've got Batman in my basement. <laughs> I'll go bullet for Bullock. And you'll go with that, too. Yeah. Because you said that. You would say that. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. This is from Keen Machine. Greetings, yappy dudes. I realized I needed to send in my mail or else I'll start to be erased from the lore of Jump on the Batwagon. So here I am, the return of the Keen. I'm still so jealous of those who were able to attend the WF live premiere. It sounded like a wonderful time. Congrats to Brian on reaching the best Batman Superman crossover movie to ever exist. Congrats to Jamie on successfully bringing him this far. That's enough for this week. I'll see you in the future. Keep it keen. Thanks, Keen, for checking in, baby. Yeah, good to hear from you, buddy. (laughs) This is from Dr. Fate Boy Fanboy One. What up, Big Pimpin? Hey, I heard y'all were going to watch Hand of Fate, and I thought, huh, Dr. Fate's in that episode, right? Maybe I, Dr. Fate Boy Fanboy One, should leave a message. So here I am. Anyways, I'm here to let Lobo Boy Fanboy 420 know I found his lost friend, Jonah Hex Boy Fanboy 69. I also wanted to congratulate, hmm, I want to say Jerry and Brian on having a live show. Very success pilled, legitimate coded, even. <laughs> this episode is a 10 out of 10, the perfect amount of Dr. Fate for my liking. Anyways, y'all keep yapping it up dude style, and I'll keep listening as long as Dr. Fate is in the episode. Sent from a rather large tome in my expansive library, Watchtower Lobo Vid Win. Good question. <laughs> I was going to say all that. How could we do a whole video on Lobo? We just did a whole video on Mr. Mixia Spitlake, so I guess anything's possible. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you never know. Final remaining comments on last episode, Bizarro's World or Smoother Kryptonite. Uh, This is from Nick Sorensen. Goodbye, me and Bizarro Nick, not back from Bizarro World once again. Me still no understand how Bizarro can be clone, but me just angry to see this episode leave him on sad note. Why Bizarro no be hero and let missile explode? Also, episode have too many chairs. (laughs) When he brought out all the chairs. Though me am also not confused because me thought last episode was supposed to be the foot of destiny in uncontroversial air date order. Me no sure how much longer I can keep up this act. I mean, no big old whoosh. Me did not just fly away again. <laughs> well done. Thank you. Matthew Eron. Matthew, Matthew Aaron. I'm back from the past in the time of BTAS season one. Whoa. Oh, so... You'll hear this in a year and a half. Uh, <laughs> and last last first, we got Mark Aquino, The Hand of Fate. Or dude should have just put the lotion in the basket. <laughs> or Superman meets Magic Thimble Man. Well, he doesn't meet him for the first time because it was established in this episode they'd already met previously. Ugh, Something yeah. tells me that might bother and confuse people, but hey, you got to just go with it. Overall, I really dig this one. The design of the villain Carcoal had a very Lovecraftian look to it, and Ted Levine's booming voice fit the character. The demons he brings about are genuinely creepy, and there were some great moments of otherworldly horror.
horror on display here. Of course, this was the DCAU introduction to Dr. Fate, and I do like their interpretation of the character, world-weary and tired from a life of facing forces beyond human comprehension. It's like the action movie trope of guy who was the best at what he did and is now retired, but is called back into action because of an old enemy. Right, Bizarro Mark? Yeah, it like that, but with the creepies and the crawlies and the stuff with tentacles that be in cartoons that really not for kids, but it okay because there's no banging in this. <laughs> Jesus. Superman definitely do more than kiss people and stuff like that. Okay, let's stop right there. Boss biggest bear hugs to the number one podcast host in this year multiverse of ours, Juicy Juice and Boulevard of Broken Dreams. <laughs> Praise to our Lord and Savior, Dylan Pollock. Keep up the great work on your own podcast. Remember, tell Gab that she rules. Likewise, of course, to all his loyal disciples, all the names. You're the absolute best. Don't you ever forget that. I know Brian's an X-Men fan, so I'm curious as to whether he's been watching no, the X-Men 97 Stop series. asking me. I have, and it's terrific. Is everyone asking you this? Yes. So many people. So many people. And it's like, I get that, I get that I'm like the x-men yeah. guy what if, uh -huh. what a reason to, to some people but like people keep forgetting i'm you know, like i hate cerebral <laughs> yeah. uh, people keep forgetting that I, I hate remakes and things like that and i know that this is like no. oh no it's a continuation i'm like i, I don't know is it is it's it like though? mostly the same voice actors and there's a lot of the other like crew are back and stuff like that I mean, so that's it's like cool a but actual continuation i get i get it still falls in the same it had its time do something something else or whatever but i think that's and kind i of kind of feel is. that people yeah. have always like even before kevin conroy's passing people are always just like give us more batman the animated series oh my god and i'm like that ended like 20 years ago <laughs> 25 years ago <laughs> like please like we can have other things like, just, just give us enjoy. like something beyond just batman <laughs> yeah right just Bat batman of the future or something yeah like that. yeah uh, speaking of Bri Bri, next week we'll be seeing one another one of Brian's favorite villains return, but I'm not going to spoil that as the title pretty much spells it out for him. <laughs> Anywho, I'll let you guys get back to dodging runaway saw blades there in Big Bus. <laughs> Brian knows what I'm referring to. <laughs> and Brian broke his face open on a saw. Till next week, big old whoosh, I just flew away. Hey, I did not break it over. Well... <laughs> If you count the full I guess it is the saw. The object is a table saw, but the saw blade yeah. was like two feet away. Brian told me that he was dealing with a head injury <laughs> the other day when I was texting him, and I'm like, okay, replying to the other things, a head injury? And then it, you said that you hit your head on a saw, like on a table saw, and, and your head was bleeding. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? fuck are you talking what are you doing like because like, i envisioned you're like well i'm just <laughs> I just got your head in there I just like, like don't put your head there i was i was looking really <laughs> close to see if i was making the cut straight and i just headbutted the saw blade <laughs> yeah no it's I not need to make sure i line it up with my eyeball and get my eyeball right in there <laughs> oh no <laughs> no it's, truth my be coat. told i'm like terrified of table saws so i'm always very careful when using yeah. them, but apparently slightly less careful while just around them while they're unplugged. Did you drop something and then stand up into it or what? I stood up into it. Yeah. I was trying to get something that was like underneath kind of like around the table saw and there's just some shit in the way. And then I like just went to stand up too quickly and caught the corner and <laughs> I just did stand up bleed. too quickly and <laughs> it still hurt. <laughs> Someone threw a saw blade at me. Meow. Well, uh, do you want to guess what the name of the next? Ne guess what the name of the next episode is? As, as, as that's all what yeah. we always do. No, <laughs> no, I yeah. don't. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, do you want to guess if it's Superman or Batman? It's Superman. It's not. Yeah. <laughs> it's batman the episode, is, the episode is called cold comfort <gasps> what's it about okay clayface. <laughs> the joker takes clayface to the top of a snowy mountain yeah and they kiss what? you got it i'll give you one more shot <laughs> that's that's what clayface said to joker and then he kissed him again <laughs> and then they kissed <laughs> Look, Joker, I know you've done a bunch of bad stuff. I was there for all of it somewhere in the background. <laughs> I'll give you one more chance. <laughs> just kiss now. <laughs> I'll forget everything else. Okay, so I'm going to say that uh, because he's smart, Mr. Freeze is going to be trying to overcome uh, some problem that's mm -hmm. mostly just a problem for him, but that mm -hmm. Batman sees it as a problem for everybody in Gotham. <laughs> You've just described every Mr. Freeze episode. <laughs> Thank you. 
What particular problem do you think? Because you're right. What what problem do you think he's got going on right now? Can you say you're right a little more enthusiastically? You're right, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um. Well, where did we last leave, Mister Freeze? Do you he remember? was like he was like floating away in an iceberg or sinking yeah. away in an iceberg. He and his wife were in an iceberg. <laughs> um. Is this a continuation of that episode? Uh, in some ways, I suppose it doesn't. It doesn't start off with them like in the ice. It does not. Oh, uh, he's got to find a way to bring his wife back to life. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we do only have eight more episodes before we enter 1998, finally, and 12 more episodes until our next movie. Oh, Ooh. we're gonna be doing a live podcast in Big no, Bus, no. Oregon, next <laughs> no. month. March 9th, 2025. <laughs> no, uh, a real movie this time, not a not a packaged as a movie episode. Oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you excited for Cold Comfort? Yes. Clayface and Joker kissing on a mountaintop. Yes. Oh, it's going to be so good. <laughs> and they bring Nora Freeze back to life with the power of love. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Clayface and Joker kissing. It was so beautiful. And I woke back up. <laughs> My disease was cured or whatever. <laughs> Man, the real hero. Well, I enjoy. I look forward to enjoying that next time. <laughs> That's, That's a I weird said. way to put it. I can't talk today. <laughs> I'm just going to leave now <laughs> and Soma look forward to <laughs> Mr. Freeze. Yeah, baby. That's going to be awesome. I got to get the can ready for multiple times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Okay. We'll see you in at least seven days for that. For that. Goodbye. Okay, listener. I love you. Bye. The healing balm should do its work. What made you change your mind? You. Something I said? Something you did. You went back. You didn't stand a chance, but you went back. Till then I thought it was only the forces of evil that wouldn't give up. I was wrong. Your helmet. I'll be needing it. Jump on the Batwagon is hosted by the Watchtower Database. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for DC Animated Universe videos on a regular basis. This podcast is edited and produced by yours truly, James Strecker. Musical themes by Kimmy, Cooney, Phoenix, Viltzu, Eric LeBeau, Jordan Blumen, my mother, and of course, my smooth co-host, Brian Brother Broderick Manili. To buy us a yappy beverage and hear your name read in a future episode, or to nab yourself a yappy dude t-shirt, please visit the links in today's show notes. Thank you for supporting the show. You can hear more on today's DCAU episode by checking out our friends over on the DCAU Review and Tim Talk podcasts. Please leave us a five-star review on your app of choice you'll damn well hear it read on the show. If you'd like to reach out to us like the fire hand at the end of The Cat and the Claw Part 2, you can email batwagonpod at gmail.com or leave a comment on the pod tower. New episodes of Jump on the Batwagon are released Fridays on all your favorite podcast feeds and watchtowerdatabase.com. And we'll see you next episode, same pee-pee time, same poo-poo channel.